Hi, greetings from the Pacific Northwest. Bo here. I said I was going to release it another time. I decided to do competing videos. Competing videos. See who does better. The records or the baseball cards? We shall see. Anyhow. All right. So, so I talked about this at the end of my last video, which will be out at the same time as this video. Uh, I traded all my Beatles records at one time for some 1960 Topps baseball cards. And I thought I'd show you what I got in trade. These are all graded. I think they're all BVG graded. I'll try to cut down the glare. They're all 1960 tops. This is a, graded a seven. Don Drysdale would uh, knock down his mother, you know, they used to say, to win a ball game. Um, it was a really good baseball announcer, too, Don Drysdale. It was also on an episode of the Brady Bunch for you young folks that can remember remember those days. I got to find to make a pile here someplace. We'll make it over here. Okay, so uh, this is a three. This is Al Kaline. I think he passed away not too long ago. Uh, famous story about Al Kaline was he was a hundred thousand dollar player back when that was a lot of money. He'd had an off season, and then the next year he tried to take less money from the Tigers, and they, the Tigers wouldn't allow it. They're like, "No, you're Al Kaline. You had, a, you had an off year, so what?" Uh, Probably the guy that had the best five-year span. This is a four-and-a-half. Five-year span in the history of baseball. This is a Sandy Koufax. My dad and his dad took a bus from Snohomish, Washington, down to, down to L.A. and watched a three-game set in 1963 between the Milwaukee Braves, whose pennant is on the wall right behind here, and the L.A. Dodgers, they took in a three-game set. They saw Koufax pitch. They saw Warren Spahn pitch. saw Henry Aaron play. Eddie Matthews play. Speaking of that, there's the hammer. To me, the hammer is still the all-time home run king. Sorry, Mr. Bonds. I'm going to go with the hammer. The four. I don't need to show the back on all of them, I don't think. Uh, and Mr. Ma there's Mr. Eddie Matthews. Hall of Famer, third baseman. 500 plus career home runs. You know, those kind of stats don't matter. It's all about these sabermetric bullshit. I, give me home runs and batting average any day of the week. I, that's why I don't pay attention to baseball anymore. <laughs> I played baseball in high school and very briefly in college before dropping out and joining the Army. And I, I don't watch baseball hardly anymore. First of all, the Mariners have really let the fan base down. They're on a very expensive cable package. Uh, they only want to put butts in the seats as cheaply as possible. They've got a pitching staff right now, that, apparently, that's good enough to win the whole thing, but they, 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 can't, they have the worst batting average in the American League, and they, they lead the American League hitting-wise in strikeouts. So, you know, they had had a 10-game lead over Houston. I think it's down to two. You're like, boy, for somebody who doesn't follow baseball, you should know a lot. But, you know, you, you see stuff on the news. It's unusual. Stan the Man, peeking around the corner. This is a three. Unique batting style there for Stan the Man. Unusual. Let's see, who else did I get here? Uh, Robin Roberts on the Man. That's from uh, that movie with uh, Michael Pere, Tom Berenger, um, Eddie and the Cruisers. When they're going to play on that college campus. They see those guys playing like cricket or something. They're like, Robin Roberts on you, man. Robin Roberts. A uh, Hall of Famer. I don't know that he won 300 games, but he won a lot. He was a member of the 50, 1950 Wiz Kids. For those of you that, that I don't, I'm not old enough, but my dad remembers the 1950 Philadelphia Phillies, the Wiz Kids. Roger Maris. This one's a five. A lot of these guys pose without their hats on, which is kind of unique on the 60s set. You know, get that profile in there. Good looking guy, Roger Maris. Um, Hit the, uh, what did he hit? 61 and 61? Is that what he hit? Or was it 60? Boy, that's sad that I can't remember. But still some pretty good numbers, if, you ask, if you're asking me. Then my dad's favorite player, Mickey Mantle. This is a two, two grade on a BBG scale. God, that glare. Mickey Charles Mantle said that if he realized he was going to live that long, he'd have taken better care of himself. His good uh, hunting and drinking buddy, Whitey Ford, also a Hall of Fame pitcher for them New York Yankees. And then the guy that uh, played and later managed all of them, Yogi Berra. 
guy who, uh, let's be honest, Yogi Berra could uh, spin quite the story. He had a great career later on uh, doing commercials where he kind of made fun of himself with his with his yogiisms, you know, his little his little one line, his weird little one liners. I showed this at the end of my last video. Frank Robinson. I think Frank Robinson was the first black manager too in in Major League Baseball. This is uh, him with the Cincinnati Reds. Um, this is a one and a half, so it's not super great. This is a Willie McCovey rookie card. The man who McCovey Cove is named after Stretch. Stretch was the old nickname. Let's see. That uh, Harmon's Killer Brew. The man later went on to make a root beer in Oregon, and it was called Harmon's Killer Brew. Played with the Nationals, played with the Twins, got the Twins to the 65 World Series uh, with, with the help of others. Uh, I think Jim Cott was on that team. Was Rod Carew on that team, or was that a little too early for Rod Carew? I think the shortstop was the MVP, Zoli Versailles, Versailles, whatever his name was. I think that's how, I might be in his name wrong, guys. But I don't remember things that well anymore. Uh, I think he was the MVP of the American League that year. And he was never heard from again. Ah, oh, Roberto Clemente. Probably the classiest guy to ever play professional baseball. Good guy, Roberto Clemente. That's been our least. Man that just recently died. Probably, in my estimation, the greatest baseball player of all time, Willie Mays. Now, I'm old enough to remember seeing Willie play in 73. It's about when I started watching baseball. I was a little kid, but that's when I first can remember watching some baseball. And uh, he was not so good that year. He, got, he was with the Mets. They got to the World Series. Um, but he was not the same guy. But, you know, you watch the old highlights of him. He, he's probably the greatest baseball player of all time. I was, because I live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, I saw a junior play, I don't know, 100 times, 200 times, or I mean, in live, in person. Go, well, I used to go to a lot of Mariner games. And uh, that's the best baseball player I've ever seen in person. But the Based on reputation, I'll say Willie Mays is the best of all time. Anyhow, so that's what I traded all my Beatles records for. And I went and bought them all back anyhow later. So, baseball cards. Hockey, baseball cards. I got football cards. I got basketball cards. I got records. Um, I still have some lunch boxes. They're on storage now. Um, some Western figures from the 50s, 60s off the TV series. I got a bunch of them too, but they're also in storage. I don't display them anymore. They're just in a storage unit. One day they'll go in a garage sale. Anyhow, we'll see you guys later. Bye.